Hello, boys and girls. Um, how are you doing? Yes, um, I'm well. And for those who may not know, my name is Teacher Andrew, as many call me. And I really am so grateful, you know, to get this opportunity to talk with us. And I'm saying with us because even as I share with you, I'm also speaking to myself. Because, you know, the word of God, it's for all of us. Young, old, you know, it's for all of us. And so it's not just about telling you what God is saying, but it's also telling me what God requires or desires of me. And so today we have another lesson that we want to go through. And for those who've been following, um, for the last two Sundays we've been going through a lesson, uh, you know, a series of lessons. You know, there are four of them, so we've done two already, you know, uh, that we are calling the ABCs of salvation, because that's the main thing. It's about you know, having a relationship with God. You know, all these things that we talk about, it's all about having a relationship with God. And for the last two Sundays, the first Sunday, which was on 26th, we talked about heaven, you know, being a what? A free gift that God has given to us. And then last Sunday, we talked, you know, about reminding ourselves that we are sinners. Do not any of us can say they are perfect. We all are sinners. And we need to know that so that we can know what God desires of us. And uh, the other two lessons that are left, which we'll do the next two Sundays, but we thought, why don't we, you know, think about God's love, even as we think about all these things, because our, our third lesson will be the cost of sin. You know, we discovered we are sinners. Now we need to know. So what's the cost of sin if I continue sinning? You know, but before we get there, we need to talk about God's love. Because God, God's love is one of a kind. That's how I'll title our lesson today. That God's love is one of a kind. And I believe all of us love to be loved. You know, not even just about loving others, but we desire to be loved, to be shown love. And we are shown that by so many ways. But before we talk about that, let's pray. Almighty God, we thank you today for giving us another opportunity to hear your word, to learn from your word, just what you're telling us today. And almighty God, as we go through this lesson, we pray that you remind us of your word and you would help us to understand what you're telling us and so that we can also be doers of the same word, O oh God. So be with all of us, for we pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. So today we're talking about God's love being one of a kind. And as I said, all of us desire to be loved. I don't think any of us desire to be hated, you know. We always want to hear someone say how much they love us or do something that shows us how much they love. Because sometimes, you, you know, someone may tell you, I love you. But the way they do things towards you then doesn't really show that they do love you. And that's why I was saying that God's love is one of a kind. It's different. It is not attached to what we do or how we live our lives but he just loves us because he loves us. And we can learn this from the book of Matthew, chapter 18, verse 10 to 14. Yeah, uh, Matthew chapter 18, verse 10 to 14. I know it's, the story is also in the book of Luke. Um, I, I can't tell you the exact uh, verses, but it's replicated in, 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 in the book of Luke. But today we just want to go through this. And so the book of Luke is telling us a story which is a parable that about, you know, the lost ship. And maybe what I want us to do is just, just read those few verses and just see what the Bible tells us before we go through the lesson. So let's read. So open your Bible. I hope you have it. If you don't have it, as I open mine, why don't you get yours? And so that we can learn together. So... Um, the, the book of Matthew chapter 18 from verse 14, uh, from verse 10, this is what it says. The story of the lost ship. So verse 10, see that you do not look down on one of these little ones. Here is what I tell you. Their angels in heaven can go at any time to see my father who is in heaven. Verse 12, what do you think? Suppose a man owns a hundred sheep and one of them 
wanders away. Wouldn't he leave the 99 sheep on the hills? Wouldn't he go and look for the one that wandered off? What I'm, I'm about to tell you is true. If he finds that sheep, he is happier about the one than about the 99 that didn't wander off. Verse 14, it is the same with your father in heaven. He does not want any of this little one to be lost. So that's what the Bible is telling us. You know, now think about it. If this man has a hundred sheep and one wanders away, you know, as he takes care of them and he discovers one has wandered away from the, other, the rest of the flock, wouldn't he go, you know, and search for it and try and get it back? And when he gets it, will he not be happy because of that one? Yeah? What do you think? Think about it. You know, maybe not cheap, but maybe you have something or you have some money and part of the money is lost or you have no idea where you placed it, you misplaced it. Wouldn't you, you know, start looking for it? Ama, you'll just be like, ah, it's lost, it's okay, and you move on. And will you, will, uh, wouldn't you be happy when you get it back? Think about those words. Because that's what we are talking about today. Because God loves us so much. And we've had this many, many times. And that's why we recite John 3.16. You know, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son so that no one would what? Would perish but have everlasting life. And that is what God is telling us today. That his love is so great for us that he will do anything to get us back to, to the fold. And when he does that, he celebrates of that one that has come back. Because the rest are already with him. They are within the fold. But he will go out of his way to get this one. And so what God is telling you is that he loves you so much. It doesn't matter who you are, how you are, but he cares about you. And so as we think about salvation, as we think about, you know, eternal life, and as we think about, you know, how God wants us to live our life, just know he loves you so much, so, so, so much, that he has given his only son to die on the cross for you and for me. And so that we not get lost, but so that we can be found if we are lost and enjoy the blessings of eternal life. Are you that one sheep that has wandered away? Are you? Have you wandered from the fold? Are you doing and walking the way God desires you to? Are you following in his footstep? As we've been learning from the word of God, are you doing that which God has been telling you? Or you've decided, no, I know how to live my life. I know what I want. And you just live the way you want. God is saying, I still love you. You may feel you're not worthy of his love. You feel like you've done so much wrong things that you think he does not love you. Just know he does. He cares about you. And he's always there asking, can you come back? You know? Like that man who wandered, you know, went out there into the bushes, you know, to look for that one sheep. He's also doing the same. And he's just saying, my son, my daughter, I love you. I want you to come back. So why, why don't you turn back to him and enjoy the blessings that he has for you? So just know that God's love is one of a kind. It's love that is not held by the things that we do. You know, the many times we tell God, mm, I don't care, I'll just do my own thing. But even after doing that, you know, for me as a human being, I'll be like, okay, if you don't want, that's okay, you go. But for him, he will still say, no, I still love you. I still care for you. I desire you to come back 
and walk this walk. I will hold your hand and I will lead you. Yes, it is not easy, but I am with you. I will walk with you. I love you. And so there are many things that we can learn from this lesson. And God is also saying, you know, a relationship with God, it's like no other relationship that we've experienced. Because many a time we experience many relationships that fail us, disappoint us. But God's relationship is like no other. You know, God has a unique kind of love for you. It is unconditional. It is not based on meeting some conditions. You know, God loves you because he loves you. That's the basis of it all. He loves you because he loves you. So don't try to figure out, no, sometimes you're told and you you know, come to Christ and all that and you start saying, you know, I don't think he loves me. I don't think he cares for me. I don't think he will accept me because of how I've been living my life, you know. But God is saying, you know, just the way you are, come to me. Because when you come to me, then you'll be transformed. You'll be changed and you'll be that which I've called you to be. He does not love you based upon your performance. He does not look at your performance so that he can decide, mm, how do I love you? How do I? Yeah? There is nothing you can do to cause God to love you any more than he, he's already loving you. There's nothing. If you think that you need to be this good guy or this good person, you can't do anything. How he loves you today is the same way he will love you tomorrow. He's the same way he loved you yesterday. He does not love you more today than yesterday. No, he loves you the same way every other day, no matter who you are. God's love you, he does not love you any less. He loves you even more than even you love yourself. He cares about you more than even you care about yourself. Imagine someone who loves you than you love yourself. When you're looking down on yourself, when you're thinking you're not good enough, when people tell you, you know, like especially when you're in school and people call you names and they think you're ugly, you're not as beautiful as, you're not as handsome as, you don't have this and that. You know, when people are looking at you with all those things, that God is still saying, you know, I love you the way you are. You're beautiful. You're handsome. You're the best of the best. He loves you that much. And so our memory verse for today as we think about God's love comes from the book of Romans chapter 5 verse 8. The book of Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. And this is what it says. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. Uh -huh. Let me repeat. But God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. That God showed his great love for us. He sent Christ to die for us. Not when we became good. Not when we started doing things that pleases him. But even when we were still sinners. He did that for us. How many of us can do that? to us, or how many of us can do to someone else when they've hated us, when they've called us name, when they've abused us, they've done bad things to us, can we still be able to say that I can go this extent to show my love for this person? That is God for us. And that's why we are saying his love is one of a kind. That even when you call him on his face and, you know, put him away, he's still saying, I love you. When you go into sin and you do all the manner of things you, you want to do and you say this is my choice, this is how I want to live my life, he's still saying, I love you and I love you so much. When you've decided you know how best to live your life and go to your own path, you know, at home, you know, you decide, you know, this is the way you want to live. God is still saying, I love you and I desire that you can accept me and walk with me.
So that is God's word for us today. Just remember, God's love is one of a kind. It is not the kind of love that you have experienced before. It is not the kind of love that you will experience in this world. It is beyond that. So why don't you accept that love? Let us pray. Dear Lord, we thank you that you have your own kind of love that is beyond what human can even comprehend. It's a kind of love that sometimes we don't understand because we wonder why you would love us when we are not following your ways. We'll wonder why you love us even when we are deep into sin where we have chosen to do what we think is the best for us. Even when we think that our life is better and you're telling us, mm -mm, that is not the way, but you still love us. Ear in, ear out, we walk away from you and you're still saying, I love you. You gave your son to die on the cross for our sake. You gave a sacrifice that is greater than anything else. And still we continue to sin and to do all the wrong things. Even when we know how to do the right thing. And we decide, nah, we don't want this God. We want to live our own lives. You still say, I love you. When we've gone, even we have read your word. And we have seen how you want us to live your li our lives. But we still say, no, I don't think you knew how to. We know better. And the things that you say no to, we say yes to. And we think, you know, that's it. And we start talking about how God has created me this or that. And yet you still say, I love you. Lord, help us to appreciate that love. Help us to accept that love. And walk back to you. Oh Lord, we thank you. And even for today, for all of you who may be watching, listening, and you want to say, yes, I have walked away. But today, I want to make a choice to appreciate that kind of love. And you want to say yes to Jesus. Pray this prayer after me. Just this short prayer. Dear Lord, I know that I've walked away from you. I know that I have lived in sin and I have chosen to walk my own way. Yet, you still love me. Today, I want to say yes to that love. I do not know how to walk in it. I do not know how to live a life that honors you. But I desire to love you to honor you, and to live according to your word. Accept me today. Change my life. Transform my life. Help me to walk in your ways, to love you, to honor you, and to live for you. Dear Lord, I thank you for all those that have prayed that prayer. And Jehovah God, may you help them Continue walking in faith and looking for a place where they can grow in faith in you. A place where they will be able to live their lives according to your word. Lead them, guide them, and walk with them. For we pray all this believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. So thank you for listening and watching. And if you've made that prayer, the best thing you can do is to tell someone that you have made that choice. So if you don't come to this church, you know, go where you go to church. If it's a Bible-believing church that teaches about Christ, just go and talk to either your Sunday school teacher or your pastor and just tell them the choice that you have made. If you come here, you know, when you come on Sunday, talk to your teacher. Tell them I have made this choice to walk with Christ so that we can join hands together and help you to grow in Christ. So God bless you. God bless your family. And walk this way. For God's love 
It's one of a kind. It cannot be experienced in any other way but following his will. God bless you.